Gang, if we could all mute, if you don't mind. OK, I confirm you're live. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing this live stream of this meeting. This is Friday, 30th of April 2021. Welcome to the meeting of the uh, Grants Advisory Committee. I'm Councillor Joe Hales. I'm the chair of this committee. Uh, for information, members of the public, the role of our committee is to consider and make recommendations to the lead member for finance, Councillor John Williams, on applications made under the Council's grant schemes. Councillor Williams then makes his decision taking into account our recommendations. Members, can you please do remember just keep your microphones muted uh, unless you're called to speak, uh, in which case you'll need to unmute for obvious reasons. Otherwise, we keep going, that, am I muted and can you hear me? OK, we don't want to cut that bit out now after doing it for a year. OK, agenda item number one, apologies. I, uh, Aaron, can I come over to you for apologies? And also, would you mind doing the roll call as well, please? Yes, Chair, thank you very much. Um, we've had apologies from Councillor John Williams, the Cabinet Member for Finance for this meeting. Otherwise, um, we haven't had any others. Members, I'm going to read out your name. Um, if you could please confirm that you're present, remembering to unmute your microphone before you speak. Councillor Daunton, please. Um, yes, I'm present. Councillor Ellington. I'm here, thank you. Councillor Handley. Me too. And Councillor McDonald, please. Yes, good afternoon. Thanks, members. Councillor Hales, clearly we're aware that you're also present. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to do the declarations of interest now, members. So if you could sing out, if you have any, please give them the page number. That'd be handy as well. Thank you. I have a couple, Chair. Um, I need to find the page numbers, but it's the, the, the two which relate to Willingham Wolves Football and Willingham Action Group. It's a non-pecuniary interest. Um, these are groups are in my ward, although I am not, I don't have a connection with them apart from that. Don't see that as a, a problem declaration necessarily. So Baron. take your advice on that. Should I, should I speak as um, normal on those? Yeah, you, you, uh, it, just because it's part of your ward doesn't uh, necessarily make it right. uh, an interest that you need to declare, but thank you. All right. OK, yeah. Anybody else, please? Um, yes. I need to Hello. declare uh, page 11, the uh, Patworth Ministry. Uh, I'm a member of, of that congregation, um, but wasn't aware this application was coming forward. Um, and uh, also uh, page 18, Swavesey Spartans, which I have supported. And page 20, Fendrayton, um, church bell which i've supported but i don't think i'm not a member of any of the organizations just the last two are part of my area uh, my ward and therefore have been asked for advice about them uh, and thank you so okay aaron you can advise thank sue i'm probably the first one but the other two are probably okay by the sound of it yeah, thank you. Um, the other is fine. I mean, um, Councillor Ellington did state that she was unaware of the application coming today, so has obviously not discussed it um, with the group. And um, really, I think the only thing would be if, if Councillor Ellington had a financial interest in the organisation, which as a member of it doesn't sound like no, then, then that's fine. That would just be a non-pecuniary non interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? No, brilliant. OK, thank you very much. OK, so that's agenda item, uh, agenda item number three, which is the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, I'll go through as normal, if I may. Um, please sing out if you see any uh, uh, things to change. Page one. And page two. Um, yes, Chair, under the third paragraph down on page two, under the, it was my um, comment about the mobile warden scheme. I don't recall saying that there were ne negative perceptions around the mobile warden scheme. I certainly didn't mean to say that. 
um, really my reasoning for suggesting that we bring it in line with was simply to bring it in line with Age UK so there's no confusion. That's all that was about. Uh, I, I don't think there's any negative connotations with the Mobile Wardens uh, as a name, OK? OK. Um, what would you like to, to say well, then? I, I, I think you could just re remove, um, ju just, just to say align with the Age UK schemes. So to community wardens um, to align with the Age UK scheme, simple as that. Yeah, OK, that would be part that would be down to those schemes to make those decisions. Yeah, not not for us to dictate. OK, I think that would be the right way because a lot of these are a lot it was, of, it, around it was just people, a suggestion, so. Joe, so I, I, you yeah, know, I, know yeah, yeah. I know there's change. Like, let's change the words to what you suggest and then we can we can go with it afterwards. Yeah. Right, okie dokie. Uh, agenda item number four, community chest funding applications. Gang, as we've been told, we have a, a lot to get through. Um, and Vicky, I, you're going to be running this year for us. Thank you very much. Thanks. In that case then, over to you. Page seven, I think the first one. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Thanks. As you're aware, there are a few. Um, I did intentionally provide quite a lot of detail in Appendix A, um, so we would hopefully save time today when reaching decisions. Um, so going on to the first one is the Cambridge Futsal Club. Um, the project is to run a football festival for a period of 10 weeks, April to June. Well, we're almost at the end of April, but I believe they're looking to start um, next week now if they haven't already. Um, but so it's a futsal, um, different type of football, but ultimately it's, um, you know, promoting a healthy and active community um, and a different type of football as well. So it's um, enhancing the skills of that sport. Um, it's much more sort of intricate than the kind of football you see on the local rec. Um, since they submitted their application, they've actually been able to reduce their costs. Um, so they've sort of shown quite a lot of endeavour on their own to, you know, to make this project succeed. Um, if you want, I can go through those reduced costs for you just very quickly. Um, um, so, Joe, mind, Chairman, yeah, yeah Chairman, I, I'd like to because that was going to be one of my comments that some of these yeah. looked a bit high. Figures looked a bit high. OK. OK. Um, so initially they had the, the hall higher at £110 per hour. Um, they've managed to get that reduced to £88 per hour. Um, and also, I think they wanted it for five hours per per day, and they've been able to have that. For, um, they think they can get the tournament in four hours per day. So um, 88 at four hours for the 10 weeks is a re reduced from 5,500 to 3,520. 3, so quite a big, a big reduction there. And um, as a result, because they only need a referee for four hours per day over the 10 weeks, that's reduced to £400. So the total project cost now is £3,920 rather than the 6000 they initially thought. Um, so, you know, they've worked really hard, I believe, to make that affordable to those those teams that they they want to attract. and. They're looking at, you know, youth age, under sevens, up to under 14s. Um, I mean, it's a really, a really good club. And, you know, I, I think they'll get a really good amount of participation again with this grant funding to, to make it really affordable to those to those teams that want to participate. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of it. it's going to be in Maddingley. Um, councillor by got supports the project although not totally aware of what futsal was i think it's quite an, a new sport for a lot of people although it's been around for sort of 10 15 years um it's sort of right well, this kind of thing will raise the profile of that of that game um so that's that in summary if there's anything else you, you in addition you want to know then please let me know OK, thank you, members. Um, well, Chair, 
Sorry. Go, go ahead. Let others speak. Let others speak first. Yeah. Right. Sue, you had your hand up first, then Claire, then Bill. Well, it seems a, a very uh, worthwhile project. It covers the youth element, it covers activity and um, the social interaction bit, as well as the competitive bit. And I think that it is probably very good value for money and I would support it. Thank you, Sue. Claire? Um, yeah, I would support it and um, I'm glad to hear, Vicky, that you said that they've been able to reduce the cost. I mean, I think even at the reduced rate of £88 an hour, you know, you'd think that the university might do, be able to do a better deal than that. Um, £88 an hour for the hire of the hall is a lot of money, but um, obviously it's not £110. Um, I like the idea of it. I think this is exactly what is needed now to get people back after COVID. And um, I think, you know, it, it, it's a good way of doing that. And, and also it's a good way of involving um, a smaller number of people. I know that some villages struggle to get a full football team together, whereas this, I think, would bring on, you know, more in a smaller group. So, yeah, I'm, I'm supportive of it. Thank you, Bill. Yes, I, um, as I said right at the beginning, I thought some of the figures looked a bit high. I mean, I used to I used to run a football club, albeit um, an old Gits football club rather than a, a, a youth football club. But, uh, you know, the figures did stand out at being quite high and I'm really pleased to see that they've managed to bring them down. I agree with um, Councillor Daunton that it appears to be even at 88, the, the, the charge per hour seems a bit high for a a project like this um, and also the refereeing 50 quid an hour seems a bit high as well but having said all that I, I think it's a good a good project a good idea and I'm happy to support it. Brilliant thank you Peter. Um, yeah uh, so I have, I have a Japanese friend who's a fanatical futsal player so I'll introduce him to Tom Bygot um, and he can explain all the <laughs> all the rules internationally. I think the nice thing about the project is uh, they intend to have a whole age group from under sevens yeah. right through to 14. So I think that's very good. Yeah. Brilliant. Stick your hand down, Pete. OK, um, well, I'm not going to say anything else because it's all been said. So I'm in I'm in favour of this too. So um, mm -hmm. since everybody's already have their intentions, no need to go to the vote. So that's a yes on that one, Vicky. Thank you, please. Fabulous. Thank you. OK. Just moving on to another wonderful sport, cricket. Um, Little Shelford Cricket Club, um, quite a large club, been in existence for a long time, um, since the 1870s. Um, their project is to use the grant funding to purchase and install an England Cricket Board ECB approved non-turf match pitch. Um, the ex existing crit cricket square, excuse me, um, is quite small and can't support the current growth of the cricket club. Um, so, I mean, it's used currently by eight, eight teams, five junior and five, and two senior, and they also rent the pitch out to a, uh, the county under 13s team. So quite a broad um, age range of use in there. And they hope that installation of this pitch will also allow them to grow their, their club further. Um, goes with you know stands to reason that um a weather type of pitch is going to take more um than than just a standard grass pitch um so yeah that they're applied for an ecb loan um but that will only cover 90 percent of the costs um, they did ask the parish council for some funding but as yet have not heard back from them um they also hope to get some support from the pavilion the little shelter P P pavilion committee um but they're not sure as yet how much they will contribute but it you know it does look that they are looking for finance um quite sort of broadly um the parish council have confirmed that they fully support the project oh sorry i've contradicted myself so they must have uh, since replied um but not able to provide funding because the majority of their funds have gone to to the local COVID effort. Um, but they are in support of the, the project. And again, this is a project that 
uh, promotes healthy and active community um, and develops skills. And hopefully with the addition of this cricket square will, you know, make their club um, a bit bigger and broader reaching to not just Little Shelford, but those those villages surrounding. Thank you. Pete, you had your hand up. Um, just a quick comment. Um, I mean, a lot of the cricket pitches now uh, are going to the non-turf um, for the for the central part of the pitch um, for all sorts of reasons. And of course, uh, it reduces the water usage that's required um, to have one of these. So I think it's a good thing. OK, brilliant. Anybody else? Are we in agreement? Can I just, oh, Bill? I, I, I just made a very quick comment. I mean, I'd love to, I'd like to see parish council supporting things like this, to be perfectly honest. And I, having said that, I'm willing to to, say, to accept that um, they've spent quite a lot of their uh, money on, on the COVID response on this occasion. But in ordinarily, you would hope that a parish council would, would support it. Uh, but any, having said all that, I'm supportive. Perhaps we can forgive them this month, <laughs> yeah, given, yeah. given last year. OK, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can we just put hands up, guys, if we're supporting, please? That's the unanimous as well. Thank you, Vicky. Next one. OK, so moving on to Hardwick. Um, uh, Jay will be aware of this building, as will I. Um, it's the local scout and guide building. Um, it's been there. Um, Does that mean because you're both scouts and guides? Well, we were both originally from Hardwick, so, and I think we both were, were scouts and guys, yeah. <laughs> um, so just seeing looking... Jane short trousers, that's all it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, it's totally thrown me now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, so they're looking to get their, their roof repaired and just reading through my notes. The total cost of the project is £11,664. Uh, they're looking obviously for the full funding of a thousand. Um, I mean, this, this building has been there since since the 1950s. Um, it is in need of refurbishment and it is it does get an awful lot of use from this, the scout and guiding community within within Hardwick and the surrounding villages. Um, I, I mean, being a a brownie or a guide myself, I think it provides you with good good skills um, that perhaps you wouldn't get from other sort of local um, community groups. Um, so it seems to me a worthwhile project um, encompassing the whole community. Um, and they've also said that they're, they're hoping, well, they're preparing to get a grant from Girl Guiding Anglia for 5,000. And if we award them the maximum a thousand the scout trust corporation will match this um so that's the hard week Brilliant. any hands up for anyone peter uh, no just just uh, quickly uh, i mean i think one of the key benefits is that uh, it sounds as though this will be provided out of school term um and as we know you know that that can sometimes be a problem so so uh, it sounds very positive yeah. Thank you very much. Anybody else? I'm uh, just giving my heads up. I'm yeah, yeah, that's the heads up from Sue. Claire, yeah. Yes. Bill, yeah. yeah. That's me, yes. That's everybody again, Vicky, please. Thank you. That's good. Okay, moving on to the Papworth team ministry. Um the ministry exists, this team exists to support senior citizens in, within 15 local villages. Um, they organise events around Easter and Christmas and in August run a four day holiday club. This project is called Rendezvous um, and it's and the funding is being to, uh, sought to support the event which will be held in August. So they're planning act, an act, two days of activity on the 11th and 13th of August and it's I mean, it could be considered a COVID recovery, I guess this one, um, but it's just they want to encourage people to get back together. Um, you know, lots of people have been in isolation for an awful long time, so they want to encourage um, their, their, their senior citizens that they look after to get back together and enjoy each other's company. Um, they provided um, a large breakdown of everything that they're spending their money on. 
um, a total cost of the project is, is estimated at £16,032. The Parish Council are going to contribute £200, um, so, but they're only applying for £500 from the CCG pot. Um, but yeah, essentially a, a nice project to get people back together. Can, can I check that figure with you? Yes. Um, it says here 1,632. Oh, uh, yeah. What did I you say? You need to 16, change 000. down the page. Yeah. Bill, you <laughs> need to. It's Friday afternoon, Bill. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's fine. I just wanted to be clear. <laughs> I didn't yeah, like I'm, glad, I'm glad you're listening. Um, yeah, 1,632. Okay. Apologies. So that's all those who have all those who haven't had any alcohol. <laughs> it's sixteen hundred quid. Okay, yeah. Claire, 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 first, then Sue, please. Um, I I think that um we should support this. Um, and I just wonder actually, um, Vicky sort of stolen the idea from me. Um, I think I would say it was more suitable for a COVID recovery grant. Um, because. I think it's, uh, up front, uh, Claire, uh, Jay was saying that we've got a shed load coming up. You heard that if you had just right. joined at that point, just pre-meeting. We've got a shed load of applications from both. So okay. kind of like some some look like they can and some they can't. It's coming out of the same pot anyway. It's just different headings. So okay. perhaps we'll leave the, the officers to figure out which one it's coming from. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. All right, um, um, that, that's fine with me. And yeah. uh, I just wanted to check through you, um, Chairman, with uh, Sue, that um, it is organised by the team ministry, but there's no Christian instruction associated. And that wouldn't be a problem for me personally, but I don't think that we would support it. If, I mean, it's for anyone and everyone. Yeah. OK. OK, Sue. Um, I, I did ring the vicar when I read this, uh, I have to admit, but um, it is a regular event that is been dropped from four days to two days because of the uh, pandemic. It's basically the idea is it's sort of holiday at home for those who can't get away. Mm -hmm. And so um, people, all the uh, arrangements are made with volunteers to pick elderly people up and take them to Patworth Village Hall and um, uh, make or look after them really for the day with entertainment and activities that each will enjoy. Um, and uh, my understanding is that um, there will certainly not be um, religious teaching. It, it's very much a, um, a social event for elderly uh, residents in well, one of my villages, Lulworth, is part of this um, this group, and uh, I know a 93-year-old that will go um, from Lulworth. Excellent. So it's that sort of event. And Excellent. I Bill? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I lowered my hand, Joe. So I, my question was the same as uh, as Claire's. Do you wanted to make sure okay. that it's open to all? That's all. Yeah. yeah this is. I, I, I'm. I've just applied for funding to Melbourne Parish Council for something very similar and, and got that. So I'm all over this like a rash. I think these are brilliant mm -hmm. myself. So am, am I assuming that we're all in um, support of it? Chairman, Claire, you want to come back? Yes, please. Um, how much are they asking for? They're, they're 500 pounds. Yeah. Um, Over the page. Right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I can see 200, but that's oh, from yeah, the Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, course, yeah. It's just crept over, isn't it? Yeah, 500, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. 500, yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. That's yes, then. Okay, um, thank you. Right, yes. Yes for me. Yeah. Super. Okay. That's, a, that's a unanimous thing. Perfect. Okay. Here we go, Vicky. Next one. Next one is the Cambridge Open Art Exhibition, or COAX, as they are known. Um, this is um, for the purchase of new art display panels. Um, display panels are not only required for their, they, have, they normally run an annual exhibition, I think it's their 30th coming up this year. However, they're used throughout the year by various community groups um, in and around South Cams. Um, so whoever really needs to use them and is aware of them can use them 
quite often used by Cottenham, Swavesey, I assume the village colleges, although they're kind of based there, they can, um, it's the application says they, they encourage young people to understand what it's like to hold a, you know, an art exhibition. Um, it's the kind of things you don't really think about is, well, how are we going to hang the pictures up? Well, obviously, these are the kind of things that they need to, to do that. Um, so it's a non-profit organisation run by volunteers and it's been existing since the 1990s. Um, as I said, it provides a live experience of our organising exhibitions for the whole community to enjoy. They are requesting a thousand pounds. The purchase of pan rip panels is just over that. Um, they've not requested funding from anywhere else, but they have applied for grant funding from us successfully in the past, but not in recent years. I assume when they were last updated, um, they they applied to us for these panels. So that's that's them. Mm. OK, that's lovely. Thank you, Vicky. Anyone like to speak or should we go straight to the oh, Peter? Uh, no, just very briefly, it sounds worthwhile. I wanted to check and uh, I meant to ask this on a previous one. Um, when they do the display, will they say somewhere? Will they you know, acknowledge uh, if we make the ground South Cambridge or District Council? That, that, that is a question that, that I do have in my mind for, for a number of these. Yes. Yeah. OK, okay thank you, Claire. Um, I was going to make the same point as Peter and also just to say it's nice to support an art organisation. We don't very often get applications from them, so I'm very pleased to see it. That's true, Bill. Very quickly, I'd like to I'd like to be assured that they will make it um, publicise the fact that these panels are available to other parishes in the, you know, the close proximity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's all very well saying they, they're available, but if they don't know they're available. Yeah. Mm. Certainly no. can go back okay. to them. All points considered, are we in favour, gang? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. OK, that's a unanimous, please. Thank you. OK, moving on to the next one, which is Steeple Chasers Running and Cycling Club. Um, this club started in February 2020, so just before our first lockdown. Um, and surprisingly, even throughout lockdown, they've managed to increase their membership from 25 to over 100 um, in just over a year. Um, so it just sort of goes to show how, in, how important a club like this is, especially in times of isolation, um, allowing people to get exercising um, in a, an encouraging and educational environment. Um, it's run by a lady called Victoria, um, pretty much on her own, and she wants to grow the club and she needs obviously funding to do that, um, to keep her current members motivated and also attract um, new new members. Um, to keep membership, um, you know, popular, she offered a reduced membership rate um, to encourage people to join, but that you know, although that's in, allowed her to attract lots of members, it also means she doesn't have that additional finance to support it as much as she would w without sort of dipping into her to her own pocket. So she wants um, she's looking for eight hundred and twenty seven pounds. Um, this will finance um, coaching and first aid courses for both herself and any other coaches that she brings into the club. Um, higher of the village hall, she's they're, they're planning a duathlon. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't know what what that is. Um, I don't like running or cycling, so. <laughs> and 250 pounds for um, some additional fitness equipment. So, those type of things that can just help her um, grow her club further. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, very quickly, I, d I think, although I'm no, I'm no sort of expert, um, the duathlon is cycling and, and running. But Oh, anyway. yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't quote me on that. Um, I noticed uh, Heather Williams was, was contacted. Yes. But did she did, did she support or? Yes. Since, oh, she did. Since, okay. yeah, since we wrote that, she has been back in touch and she does the project. 
OK, that's great. That's fine with me. Um, can I just ask um, the 95 pounds to hire the village hall? Mm -hmm. um, is the do we know to whom the village hall belongs? Um, we don't. I can ask. I can go back and ask. Um, uh, because if it's the parish council, we'd expect to have some support from the parish council. OK, I can I can go back and ask about that. Parish council say they support, don't they? But mm. there isn't any money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if, if they do have the hall, then it will be nice to understand why they're charging ninety-five pounds for a mm. community group. Pending that, should we? Would you like to support it, gang? Yes. Yeah. 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 So yes. Then. Okay. OK. Ready for the next one? Oh, yes. OK, um, we are looking now at Cottenham Community Centre. Um, so the project is to basically just improve the facility um, for better heating because they're obviously going to have to have more ventilation in the building when they when they, people start coming back after COVID. Um, they wish to add timed thermostatic controls to facilitate timed heating to alarm with periods when the centre is normally in use. Um, this centre is quite a, a busy centre. Um, it has it holds a coffee shop um, and also it has about, you know, four to six um, community groups using it per day with a range of activities. Um, going on. Um, so the, the, the cost of the project is £6,032. The Parish Council have contributed £1,200. They've also managed to source £500 from the Benedge Community Association. And although, well, they may award £500, uh, but have also intimated that if we, we award, award. Um, £1,000, um, it's likely to go in their favour towards getting that additional 500 from the Fenedge Community Association. Um, they have also received, they will also receive a uh, restart government grant and will be using 2000 towards this project and the remainder will be used with reserves that they hold. So again, a really community centred, community centre uh, based project and um, something that will, they will really benefit from. Just a quick question, Vicky. Is this the yep. one in the old, the old church? So opposite the co-op in Cottenham? Mm, it is, isn't I it? I don't know them myself. I think it is. If that's the one I'm thinking is, because they, 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 they're, they're, right. it's a really, it's a really terrific little thing here. When Melbourne were doing their um, community project for the hub, uh, we we went and, and spoke with them. They gave us a, a great deal of advice. So they're very well organised, frankly. So I've got a lot of time for these people. OK, uh, was it who was for Peter? Peter, yeah, please. Uh, very quickly. So I think it's good that they are using reserves. And um, I suspect that uh, other organisations may come forward in future because of um, having to increase ventilation and projects like that. So if we could, you know, swap the experience from one place to the next, but it sounds very worthwhile. Thank you. Anybody else? I, I, I agree with what Peter said. I just made the comment that I made before about being this one also being COVID related. Yeah. You know, so okay. whether or not it was um, it was more appropriate for a COVID grant. That's up to you, to the officers. But um, yeah, I support it. I think it's a good application and they've obviously uh, they're obviously doing well in attracting other funding. Indeed. Thank you, Claire. Everybody else, Claire, you, you just put your hand up again. Uh, right, sorry. It's OK. Are, are, are we all in favour? Yeah. That's a yes. Okie dokie. Thank you, Vicky. 
Willingham Wolves. Willingham Wolves. Um, so Willingham Wolves uh, is a grassroots adult and youth football club established in 1990. Has a massive membership of over 230 registered players, including men and women, uh, open age ad, 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 easy for you to say, open age adult and boys and girls at youth level. They also have uh, 40 volunteers, so a huge membership, um, near on 300 if you count the volunteers, um, a huge part of Willingham community and probably the surrounding villages as well. Um, so they they need some new goals, um, which will which will be used by their junior footballers. Uh, the cost of the project um, with nets. Uh, the goals is £3,110 and they're applying for a full grant of £1,000. Um, Councillor Handley supports the project um, there, it, it, and it's a project that will definitely support the footballing community of Willingham. Thank you, Vicky. Just as a, a point, it's £3,010 on the, in the detail, but £3,100 underneath. Oh. So 110, yeah, don't worry, it's only I'll, just about, it could I'll, be 12 I'll blame the admin team for that. Absolutely, they're dreadful. <laughs> okay, uh, Peter then Claire. Um, yeah, a bit like one of the previous applications, there's a good mix of age groups. It's also nice to see there are um, male and female teams, That that's also really good. Um, so it looks excellent, I actually think their pitch is as hard as concrete at the moment. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it was underwater a couple of months ago. <laughs> that's that's what you call climate change. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It, yes. Uh, so my same question as as the last one. Um, it, parish council support is that moral support or financial support? Yeah, it's a more moral support. They've not offered any any financial support. And they haven't stipulated as to why, but they they have just said that they support the project. I, I, could I could I interject, Chair? The, the the parish council has supported Willingham Wolves a great deal financially, um, and uh, you know they are they are very very supportive of the of the club, and the club is a, a very um, a very valuable uh, part of the village. Okay, right. Uh, that's my question answered then. So, yeah. Okay, okay. Are we all in support, gang? Yes. Yeah. It looks like a, looks like a yes from everybody. Sue, is that a yes? Sue. Sue. Is that a yes? Just, just wave. Sorry, I had a phone suddenly ringing that I had to turn off. That's okay, mate. But yes, I agree. That's it. Lovely. Thank you very much. That's another one then. Um, over to you, Vicky. Okay. To Rob Mungovern. Rob Mungovern Wild Trout Trust. Um, this one, there's a lot of detail here um, because initially I was a little confused as to what the actual project was. Um, but ultimately, um, Rob's helping a group um, called the River Mill Restoration Group, and he's helping them um, restore the River Mel in Meldriff. Um, uh, Rob has been able to obtain funding from the Cambridge Water Company Pe Pebble Fund to restore two um, rivers, the Vickers Brook in Cambridge and also the River Mel in Meldriff. The majority of the funding from that uh, grant has just sort of gone to the preparation and the, the the sort of equipment they needed so they can do the work. Um, the what they're applying for from us is in addition to to that the costings that they detailed, you know, that they'd come from the Cambridge Water. Um, so basically it's to pay for Rob's time and a pair of waders, um, three days um, of work that he will lead a group of volunteers from the from the restoration group um, and basically teach them how to to do this work themselves ongoing. There's there's quite a lot of work that they can't do. It involves chainsaws and, and bits and bobs like that. 
that they're not licensed to do, which is why they need Rob there to be able to, you know, do those bits and pieces for them. But ultimately, it's, I suppose, a three day course, if you like, teaching these volunteers how to look after their own their own river, um, which, you know, makes it a, a better and safer environment for, for the community in and around Meldrith. Um, he has provided me with an awful lot of detail since I um, wrote the appendix. Um, so if you do have any questions on this, the chances are that I do have them. So I think before I thank you, Vicky, before I go to Sue, um, I mean, Rob is the former SCDC officer, um, environment officer, and I think I think Sue, I don't know if anybody else knows him actually, obviously all officers do, but whether any of the uh, member colleagues do, I don't know, but Sue and I would probably describe the man as um, 22 karat gold, I would think, in this department. Yeah, so uh, over to you, Sue, then Peter. That's roughly what I was going to say, uh, Joe. Um, Rob is, is excellent if he says this is the way to do it, this is the way to do it. And um, uh, he left the council to work for the Trout Trust be to improve his quality of life. Um, because he felt that he didn't want to, he want, didn't want high honours and things. He just wanted to do what was right for wildlife. And I have every respect for his judgment and what he does, and I would support it. Pete? Yeah, I think you get a sense for the uh, thought in the application that it's £991.49. Um, that sounds like somebody has done some homework. Uh, anyway, it, it sounds very worthwhile and I'd be really interested to hear how they get on. Mm. Okay, fantastic. Claire, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I did. Um, yes, so yeah, I agree with what um, both Sue and Peter have said. Uh, again, um, parish council support. Um, it says not asked. Um, uh, I did ask the question, but uh, that's probably the one question that I, I can't answer. Um, but I know that they're aware of the the local the restoration group, um, but I don't know if they are if they've financed it at all. Um, but that's something that I can go back and ask. Um, uh, please, if you wouldn't mind, because if we if we're going to give the whole amount, they've still got a fair bit to raise yeah. but I'm, I'm supportive of it I think it's really interesting really interesting project I think um, if I can help uh, Mel Meldrith is one of mine so um, they are usually pretty supportive of these actually I think it's because it's a chalk, chalk bed stream it's like Melbourne they, they also support the um, restoration group so it's because it, it runs it starts in our patch and ends up in Meldrith and then carries on somewhere so it's uh yeah can i just, can I just ask one one thing um this is money for um yeah rest, restoration and and for nature it's uh it doesn't support a fishing club or something like that does it no, <laughs> it's definitely no, for, uh, yeah no yeah no okay i just, just want to be, to be just to be clear about that just to be absolutely clear we um the rob was extremely proud they managed to coax um trout and what have you back into the river and they were spawning and it was a lovely thing and then uh, county council came along and I think jetted out some of the drains that emptied into the river the road drains and then killed a lot off so he was particularly miffed mm -hmm. so um, <laughs> not a mission to denigrate the uh, highways people but I think Rob would have killed frankly there you go <laughs> right. he, he, that was, he was the key person that arranged the swifts at Fullbourne Oh, right, yeah. right, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he made that happen. Right. Yeah, this, this, this is what, yeah, I think as Sue says, what he says goes really. So, yeah. um, are we are we all in favour of this game? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's super. Okay. Only another 200 to go, Vicky. Yeah, Carry not on. long. Okay, on to Swavesey Spartans Football Club, um, similar project to Willingham Wolves um, and, and a similar size uh, football club. Um, 
I know from living quite close to Swavesy that they are um, a huge part of the Swavesy community. Um, our very own Councillor Ellington supports this project. Um, they are after some new movable goals um, to support their adult boys and girls and now ladies football teams. Um, the cost of the project is £1,995 and they are applying for a full award of £1,000 towards those. Thank you. First of all, can I just ask Sue, what position are you playing, Sue, in the team? Are you goalie or forward? Well, I fill the whole goal, so I'm really safe. <laughs> the team's really safe. Get out of it. Get out of it. <laughs> Right, gang, have we got any more comments on this or are we, uh, we're going to um, just go just for to, approval? And just to say that Swayze as a, as, a, as a village is football mad. So, um, yes, I support this. <laughs> I, um, through you, Chair, I did check with the Parish Council um, and they weren't asked. Um, but in the past, they had last year, for example, they provided over 20,000 for the um drainage of the football pitches so they're very supportive of of the football pitches excellent okay i just want to make one one final comment about these fen edge villages and movable goals it helps the pitch management mm -hmm. you yeah. know if the activity moves around the green you don't wear out one part of the pitch i, I exactly. No, exactly it's probably, obvi it's probably obvious but i thought i'd say it no no yeah. that's good um can I just assume we're, we're all approving? I am, so yeah. 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 Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, William okay. now, I think. Yes. William. Okay, yeah. Willingham Action Group are looking to... The WAGs. <laughs> yeah, the WAGs. Their project is called Flowers for Willingham. Um, they are seeking funding for the purchase of six, six large flower tubs to be placed around the village green and by the Ploughman Hall, and this will also include the purchase of soil and compost for the planters. Um, the group will con continue the maintenance of these, um, and in the future they hope that local businesses will, will sponsor the purchase of more tubs, um, and also, you know, it's not only going to make Willingham look much prettier, um, but also, you know, for the local species of bees and and you know, just by attracting those kind of insects, there's going to be more flowers with it. it you know, it goes without saying that's what, what happens. Um, so they're looking for 474 pounds towards the the costs of these the planters, and they're going to buy the the actual. They're going to purchase the seeds and the plants themselves. Thank you, Vicky. Bill, do you want to go first? Just, just to say that the, the, they're a very active group, the Willingham Action Group. It's, this is not the only thing they're doing for the village. Um, and they are very good at getting sort of self-help, whether it's from the parish council or local uh, businesses. Um, you know, they, they, they're not just going to be relying on us. And actually the four, was it 47494 is um you know relatively modest so i fully support this thank you anybody else are we are we going to go for a a vote so to speak out oh, claire claire usual question are the parish council putting any money into it it was just answered that mate so. uh no you said they were supportive yeah, I'm not sure if they put any money money in. Maybe Vicky could say, but they have certainly been very, very supportive of the Willingham Action Group. Yeah. Um, Financially, I mean. I'm not sure that they've put any money towards this particular project, but they they have got count, you know, parish council support and permission to place the planters around the village. Um, but as with regard to financial costs in this particular project, um, they haven't stipulated. Okay. To be honest, it is such a small amount of money. Um, if you look at it, really, I mean, the you know, overall cost is five hundred and forty-four quid ninety-four p. So it's kind of something I think probably someone could manage their own groups. Bigger okay. stuff, I'd expect. 
OK, I suppose it's just a, it, it's just a matter of yeah. principle. Um, and then yeah. my other issue is that um, Willingham Action Group, this is a long established group, presumably, so yes. they would have the volunteers to keep watering and refreshing the tubs. It's not just it, we're clear that they're going to be there for a while. Yeah, um, they've, they've been in existence since, since 2009 and they have five board men, members and 35 casual volunteers. OK, who all said they'll, they'll maintain the pot. OK, yeah. Thanks. Jay. Thanks, Chair. Um, it was just a point about the Parish Council support, really. Um, at the moment, we just take what the applicants tell us. So on the application form, it says, do the Parish Council support your project? And they usually tell us that the Parish Council has supported us by either in principle or giving us X amount. I was just thinking maybe we should split that into two lines on the appendix mm -hmm. and say, have the Parish Council supported financially and when? And mm -hmm. do they support it in principle? And the other and thing I would suggest, um, do we as officers then go to the parish council? Because we don't at the moment, we just relay what the applicants tell us. But it, it seems to be quite an important question. So I think in the future we will change the process slightly and go to the parish councils so we get that yep. information definitively. Yeah. Yep, OK. Yeah, well, probably when you ask them how much. Pete? Um, just a supplementary to Jay, which is what we've heard today is uh, the parish council, various parish councils supporting the clubs in other ways. So, you know, if that has taken place, I think that answers our question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bill? No, Peter's just said exactly what I was going to say. Thank you. OK. OK, lovely. OK. Uh, um, Pete, put your hand down, fella. Are we, uh, are we supporting this thing, gang? Um, I might have just make a comment, yeah. just to go back to Jay, because that was very helpful, what you said, Jay, so that what, what, basically what you're saying is that in future we will know um, that parish, when it says parish council supported, we will know what kind of support that is, whether it's mm -hmm. financial support directed at a particular application or whether it's the support, as Bill has mentioned, for, for example, the William Wolves Football Club, that there is there has been sort of general financial support in the past. That's yeah, I think we'll we'll do some more digging really about how the parish council will have supported because at the moment all we're doing is relaying you relaying to you what the applicant tells us. Um, so we I think it's a good idea to do that extra step ourselves just for full kind of disclosure on each one. Yeah, I think that would be fair. Thanks. Okay, uh, based on that, are we going with it? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's a unanimous. Okay. Right. On to <clears throat> Ben Drayton and the repair of their church bell. Um, it's not been the, the tower bell has been operable, inoperable since late 2019 when the bell rope parted from the worn pulley block. Uh, quite quite specific detail there. Well, basically, the bell doesn't chime anymore. Um, so they need some repair work um, to replace those broken elements of the bell. Um, they had planned to do this work last year, but obviously the pandemic hit and this wasn't able to happen. Um, and, and I know since over lockdown, there's been times when it's been quite nice to hear a church bell ringing. Um, it just sort of brings back that sense of community into especially such a small village like Vendrayton. Um, so they are looking for an amount of £888.72 um, to replace the bell wheel, uh, the rope and replacement of pulley block for the, the new bell rope. Um, just those elements of, of this repair to, to get the bell ringing again, which then they can, once we're officially out of lockdown, host weddings um, and we can hear the bells ringing, not just for those, but on a, a, a Sunday afternoon or whenever they feel the need to ring their bells. Thank you, Vicky. Um, before we go to Sue and before Claire comes in, because I think she's going to, because I'm probably going to say exactly what you're thinking, Claire. Um, and that is, this is very much based around faith. 
and I, I, I struggle with this because I love to hear the church bells myself. I really do. But for 888 quid, you'd have thought the diocese would have sorted this one out. Yeah, this is this is their building. It's an operational church, I'm assuming. Sue, so is it? It is an operational um, uh, church, but it is a very small small congregation. It is a um, normally uh, having been a um, church treasurer on several occasions. Uh, I can tell you that the diocese, diocese do not fund anything very much at all. Um, it's up to the individual church to raise money for its own repair and uh, mm -hmm. anything else it requires. Um, and the parish council would, I'm quite sure, support it. But the parish council, because it is all development in Fendrayton is isolated one off houses right because of the the nature of of the um land settlement arrangements and therefore you don't get any nice lump sums of s106 money as swavesy does or some of the other slightly larger villages and so it's it's really hard work to find anything that uh, uh, will support this bell repair Okay, before I go to Peter, Jay, I, I'm, I'm, even with what Sue's said, I'm still struggling because I, I understand that the Church of England, I imagine this is Church of England, are pretty well healed anyway at the best of times, which find it really objectionable if they can't put a new bell rope in or whatever it is. Anyway, um, I'm trying to work, I'm trying to work the rules, okay, and Worship has been very much on a back burner throughout pandemic last year. And so if if this is a way of attracting people back to worship as the restrictions are lifted, would this fall under a COVID and does the same would do the same set of rules apply? Because I understood possibly not under a COVID relief rather than the community chest relief rules. Over to you, Sorry. Joe, first, then I'll come to yeah. Peter. Thanks, Chair. So, yeah, the rules are, are pretty much the same, except parish councils can apply for the COVID side and awards can be up to £2,000. Um, but it does clearly say in our, um, in our guidance that we can fund repairs to historic buildings, monuments, memorials. So, in my opinion, church bell would come under a historic building, a part of a historic building. So I think it's fine to fund um, probably on either side, but as we've alluded to before, it's, it's the same pot and they're only asking for £888. So. Yeah, OK. It would have been helpful if they didn't put the first paragraph in then. Mm -hmm. That would have been the best way of doing it, wouldn't it? If in future, uh, Vicky and Jay, if that's the sort of thing, if it's a historic building, no problems. They said St Mary's Church is grade two medieval. That's certainly what you call historic, right? Mm -hmm. But the first paragraph is the one that's shoved shoved the knife in the thigh. So they've okay. got to be careful. So I think we just need to be cute. So if we, if, if members, I'll come to you, Pete, now, and then Claire, but if members can appreciate that the first paragraph in essentially may not exist then the rest of it falls into place beautifully. Peter. Um, yeah, I think we shouldn't uh, confuse uh, what are uh, bu uh, building, uh, ancient building enhancements in the community. So, for example, uh, we did support the South Cam's uh, the new clock, a uh, chiming clock in Duxford Church for that reason because uh, and the reason that was done which i think was a good reason was because when the remembrance sunday takes place everybody gathers by that church and everybody observes uh, the silence according to the clock in the church so we are consistent with that if we do if we make an award here so i personally don't have a problem with it thank you claire Is clear, but you're muted. 
trying to keep myself muted. I can see where this is going in. I and mean, obviously I'm very supportive of um, repairs to ancient buildings. So on that basis, I would support it. But I do think that we have to be very careful mm -hmm. about supporting applications for ministry work. And I think we really need to be careful about that. I uh, wouldn't have. I, I don't think mm. would have been able to support it on those grounds. Not that we necessarily wouldn't have wanted to. I don't think we would have been able to. Um, but under the historic buildings aspect of the community chest, then I think we can. Thank you, Bill. Yes, I agree. The um, it's the get out, isn't it? The historic building thing mm. and the fact that uh, the sound of a church bell is part of village life. Uh, I, I'm 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 willing to ac to accept all of that argument, but you know, if it had been you know historic pews in the church, I would definitely have said no. But uh, you know, we're talking about something a little bit different here. Uh, it's it's all part of village life, the church bell. So I'm willing to accept and support it. Thank you. Just as as I say, just as a foreword, if you like, or as a note to officers, mm -hmm. if we could. We just remember that one in the, in the thingy, that's great. Absolutely, okay, yeah. gang, gang, I take it then we're all in. Um, Claire, you got your hand up. You, that was that legacy. I think, um, Joe, could I just also mention there that I think, um, I mean, obviously these go to uh, the lead member finance for, um, for sort of signing off. Um, so I think it's really important when they go to the lead member finance that the basis on which we made this decision was the historic buildings um, and yeah. not the, yeah. We could leave that to officers to re represent if, if you like, I don't want to fudge yeah. it too much, but you get my drift. Yeah. Okay, in that case I take it we're all agreed, yeah? Yes. Thank you very much. And that's... Uh, Another one. Down. OK, um, <clears throat> moving on to Cottenham Bowls Club. Um, formed in, the, in 1940, a very inclusive village based club with a membership of 87, uh, varying ages, um, both male and female. Um, not wanting to sort of, you know, put it, put it on a in a particular category, but very popular with those of an older age group like myself. Um, and they wish to purchase some some steps to enable those less mobile members to step down onto the, the, the bowling green, um, which will ultimately make, you know, some people might actually stop playing because they can't access the bowling green very effectively. So they want to but purchase these step will so it will ensure that they can get onto the green um, safely and easily. Um, the purchase of two steps, um, two sets of steps is costing £1,106.60 and they're seeking a grant of £1,000 towards this. <clears throat> Both councillors Gough and Wilson support the project. Thank you, Vicky. Crikey, these are big steps, aren't they? 550 quid apiece. <laughs> uh, um, anybody want to say anything? Claire, yeah. would you like to ask? Would you like to ask your question, Claire? Because we all know what you're going to ask. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was going to. I was going to say take that one for granted, but if you want to yes, ask it, okay. <laughs> not ask. Yeah. Not asked. Uh, again, like Jay said, we're just going with information that they provide to us on the form, but it is something I can go back to the parish council or the group and ask them if they have asked. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I'm assuming we're supporting then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. I'd like to say, Vicky, you've got a very good track record so far because some of the jobs um, we've not back in the past. There, so it's pretty good. Like you're doing well, so it's great. That's common yeah, place for curves now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> so moving on to Oakington and Westwick Community Association are planning a village summer celebration. 
Um, I think sometimes these, um, going back to what Claire said earlier about this could be perhaps a COVID grant, but I think what's happened here, where they're sort of under that thousand pound mark and could be kind of either, they've been sort of put into the normal um, yeah. community chess grants, whereas the COVID we can pay, obviously, as you know, up to 2000. So this one could either, you know, could be either or, um, but they are planning to hold a summer social celebration to celebrate the easing of lockdown. Um, it's both councillors Chung Johnson and Councillor, Councillor Malian support the project. Um, they are looking to purchase two pop-up gazebos um, for use at the, the, the event. Uh, these will be used for shelter for singers and music musicians that they have at the event, um, cover their equipment, and they also plan to use these gazebos for any future events they hold. It's one of these things, once you've got them, then you can use them kind of any annual event under normal circumstances. Um, so, yes, that's that is their project. Brilliant. Yeah. Hang on, we lost someone. Peter. Mm. Liam, have we lost Peter? I'm here, sorry. I had to answer a call. Oh, you're there. I had to answer a call of nature, sorry. We didn't have to take oh, the laptop with you. There. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's here. He's, he's, he's okay. Right, Claire, why are you going? Uh, Chair, sorry, I'm going to have to drop oh, the line in, uh, drop the line in five minutes. I'm sorry. And uh, Murphy's Law applies, of course, so the one in my area is the last one. So if we could, um, I literally yeah. give a couple of minutes comment and then if you don't mind, I will have to leave. You'll be first. Okay. You'll be first. Claire, where you going? Um, OK, um, so Oakington and Westwick, right, the gazebos. Yeah, I, I support this. I think we had a, in the village here, we had a, um, in 2019, we had a sort of summer feast, a very sort of relaxed, organised at short notice. And I think we really lacked a gazebo. Um, the, the village really lacked a gazebo. So I'm very, um, very supportive of this. I mean, again, parish council support. Yes. Does it mean that they put money in? Um, again, not sure. Um, the, the form just said yes, they support. I assume there's quite a lot of cost involved in this project, so perhaps they've helped elsewhere, but yes, I don't know for for, for okay. definite. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So, my only concern is that there is a um, a satisfactory uh, procedure for the storage and the erection and restorage of gazebos because they very rapidly can become um, unusable because people bend the wrong bits and don't know how to put them up correctly. So I would advocate that we make sure that happens. But apart from that, I agree with it. Yep, lovely. Thank you. I said, yeah, lovely. Thank you. As I was on mute, <laughs> I don't mean anything here. Right. Um, OK, then I'll take it. We're in your agreement. Yep. Yep. Yes. Uh, pending what Sue said, and also keep the wind down because that's dreadful. Right. OK. OK. All right. I will quickly move Trip on. To slip though. This is actually our last one. Um, this one actually came in prior to the last committee, but we didn't bring it to committee because we felt it was actually only going to benefit the school at the time. However, since doing a little more work, um, it does look like there is sort of benefit for a whole community wider than the school and wider than just the daffodil weekend. Um, so just to recap, they're after £933.99 pence for the purchase of two picnic benches and a heavy duty gazebo. Um, it will, it's the PTA group of Thrifrow School that are wanting to purchase this and they're going to make the the benches and the gazebo available for use at their Thriplo Daffodil weekend, which I understand is quite a large event. Um, and fingers crossed it does go ahead for them this year. Um, 
but not only to be used at the daffodil event, they're going to be using it um, and made available to anyone using school ground. Um, so this is what kind of threw us last time because we thought perhaps it was just if you were part of the school, you'd be able to use it. Um, but there are several groups that are not um, necessarily affiliated with the school that will use that will use those benches and gazebos. Um, I asked why the school wouldn't fund this themselves and they basically said that the school doesn't have the additional resources to fund something you know like this you know picnic picnic benches and gazebos it's mostly their funding goes towards educational tools um, rather than the you know the sort of social yeah. aspects of people sitting together um, sure. so that's that one in a very quick nutshell Thank you very much. Uh, Peter first, then Sue, and then I'm going to come to Richard if he's online. Pete? Uh, yes, hi. Uh, so a, a little bit of history here. So uh, the PTA did make an application previously for some iPads, uh, stroke laptops for the school, which we said were not part of our, our remit. Uh, subsequently, I was able to source those uh, from the Genome campus for them. So, so that's worked out. This is a PTA um, uh, originated project, uh, which does, I think, have wide application to the rest of the community, uh, and therefore I think we should support. Thank you, Pete, and um, thank you very much for your, your time this afternoon, Pete, if you're going there. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have to. Uh, no, that's fine, we're still for it, that's okay. Yeah, okay, lovely. Uh, Sue? Well, I want to know when we're going to have daffodils that grow in June. I thought the daffodils were mm. over and they were over in March. Mm. Well over. Um, I, I don't we might, disagree we might with the project. have to reduce the climate but, temperature by a couple of degrees, I think. <laughs> daffodil weekends in June are rubbish and won't happen. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really disagree with that. Um, yeah. Um, Claire, if you don't mind, if I said to Richard, he's, he's just come on like, yeah, yeah, Richard, there you go. Hi, thanks, Joe. So, yeah, I just just coming along as a member. I'm just just to answer Sue's point. It's not just the Daffodil Festival. They get sort of craft stalls and all that kind of thing there. So they can't they couldn't have it when the daffodils were up this year, but they're hoping to have it when we're allowed to have it after June. But it's normally um, in March, so it, it does coincide with the daffodils, but it's not just the daffodil festival. They have kind of you know, cultural stuff um, as well. Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to, to speak to say that that um, I, I support this and I support it because of the community benefit. I did talk to the people who were um, making the application. I did talk to the PTA before they made it, um, and I emphasised that point, and they convinced me, and I you know that daffodil group. Um, really would use it. it. It's a whole community effort. There are various groups like the Tripler History Society that in normal times would use the school, but they're not using the school now. Um, and um, and they've said that that will be available to those sorts of community groups as well. So um, so so I do support it because they did convince me that it was good um, uh, community project. The one other thing I'll just say very quickly, because I don't want to take up too much time from, from members of the committee, but the parish council, I think, is ticked as not having been asked. It wasn't asked because of the timing. Um, Triple Parish Council meets every two months um, and the deadline was before the next meeting. Um, so the Parish Council couldn't properly consider it. But this came to me via a Parish Councillor actually, who said um, this group wants to you know, um, apply. C can you give them any advice? Um, so, so there are Parish Councillors who were supporting it, even though it didn't go to the Parish Council. Thank you, Richard. Claire? Um, OK, so that was my my usual question is about parish council support. Have they been asked and if asked, would they support and what kind of support would that be? Would that be moral support or would it be financial support? So that's my usual question. Um, and then I would simply comment that in order to get this past the lead member finance, we'd have to be sure that we were not um, this was not educational support to the school, that there was wide community involvement. And I was a bit sceptical, um, but I think having the additional information from Richard um, gives me um, some comfort that it is wider community and we're not, it's not a way of getting a picnic bench for the school, which of course, although we might like to do, we can't, this, we can't through this grant um, process give money to the school directly. 
Okie dokie. Thank you. Um, based on everything that's been said, are we, we going with this, gang? Um, yes, I think so. That's a yes, that's a yes, that's a yes. Claire, are you nodding? Um, that's okay. it, you are. I, I'm just, m might I just through you, um, Chair, put the question to Jay. Um, so Jay, when you um, take all this to the lead member finance, you, you'll you be able to um, confirm that there is um, wide community support. Yeah, I think they mentioned that they were going to advertise it to community groups um, yeah. to use as well. So I think that's covered. Um, yeah, I will make sure that John is aware though, yeah. Yeah, thanks. OK, thank you. I'll take that as a yes. And if John turns it down, then he can be the nasty one and we were the nice people. <laughs> um, don't forget to minute that as well. Right, OK, brilliant. So that's, uh, that's a yes. In, so that's, that's you done. done then, Vicky. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Right, so that's a 100 percent track record. If you need to send a, a message over to John London that he's, he's, I he's will sometimes do. had his <laughs> failed and you didn't, that'd be great. Right, yeah. thank you very much indeed. You had the um, best ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Don't tell him that. Right. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. OK, moving on swiftly to agenda item number five. This is creating a one off support fund to support older people. And we have the officer in at present, Leslie. Leslie McFarland, good afternoon. Good afternoon. That was a marathon, wasn't it? That was, that was a very good one. There's a load of people. <laughs> a load of applications, excellent. Yeah. Um, well, so the purpose of this paper is to seek um, agreement from committee members as to how we use the leftover monies from the older people's budget, which was allocated to the mobile warden scheme. So there was £30,000 left over. Um, so firstly, just seeking agreement from members that um, it can be spent um, on all other older people's projects. And then secondly, if that is agreed, then I'd just like to seek your views on the criteria. So I have drafted some, but it would be really good to, to just get your opinion as to who can apply, you know, for how much and and and, and what what can be what it can be spent on basically. So over to you. Thank you. Uh, before we go to members, Jay, do you have anything to say to add to what uh, Leslie said before we go to members? Um, no, thanks, Jase. Let's see. Okay, brilliant. OK, uh, Claire first. So I'm really pleased to see that we've got some money here for um, to spend on older people. Um, and thank you for the paper, Leslie. I First of all, I, th I thought I was going to be in favour of doing something immediately um, within the next sort of 12 months. I think that the effect of lockdown will not become um, obvious initially. And I wonder if we might not be better to look at the things that we already support and to put the money into the things that we already support. Um, I'm just thinking it through and would like to have other people's opinions on that. That's where I'm tending to go at the moment. Um, and I think also that uh, we should allow um, as many different organisations as possible to apply. I mean, would we in this instance um, be able to allow parish councils to apply? as well as non-profit organisations. Um, so that's another question um, to this committee, to this, uh, yeah, to this committee. Um, and I just wonder about all projects must, must target the over 65s age group. Um, are we are we saying that everybody over 65 is older? It's, sorry, is that directed at me, Claire, or um, well, other members? I, 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 can, I can answer that as I'm only um, 60, 60 and three quarters. Um, yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Until I get the 65, then they're uh, not. <laughs> I, yeah, OK. I mean, I suppose we're staying with this commonly accepted definition, aren't we, of over 65? I, I think, Claire, we, we probably, it's like, 
you know, how, drink driving, how many how many milligrams you need, that's not fair. I've only got one over. There has to be a benchmark somewhere, I suppose. So it's probably the easiest one to do because it's the most nationally accepted. Yeah, um, maybe I shouldn't complain about our being ageist. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. It's just we're all young at heart up until the day we, we pass away. So there yeah. you go. Sue. Um, I, I would say that I, I think I'd like to make it vulnerable people because there's a number of of people who are old before their time for, mm. for various mm. um, chronic conditions mm. and, and have suffered just as much as the over 65s. Mm. Um, so uh, I think I'd like to hear what people think about that. I'm interested in your idea, Claire, that, that we should leave it till later, but it takes time to wind things up. If we put forward this proposal that we're going to have this new grant, it'll take at least two months for people to have committee meetings and make decisions about putting an application in. Then there's another month before we look at it. Then there's another month before they get the money. So it will be next winter when most of the things that we're talking about here are actually uh, brought into play. And so I just think that perhaps if we start the ball rolling, it might be better to, to think about doing that sooner rather than later. Thank you. Yeah. That's. I'll come to you in a sec, Bill, if I may. That's, the, that's a good point, actually, about the vulnerable people. I mean, yeah. if you look at in, in Melbourne, there's a, a dementia support group mm -hmm. and the, the reports coming back from that have been catastrophic, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Whilst they've been massively supported, but the mental health aspect of both carer and person with the dementia has been catastrophic. They, they, it, it, they, they are uncertain as to where to go I think I think you know can't wait to get out but then when that's mentioned that's perhaps you know then is worried about so yeah I think that that would I think probably that would be a better way around don't you I think if we if we were to go down more of the vulnerable group rather than just make it an open-ended invitation so the, the mobile warden schemes would be quite good a vulnerable vulnerable groups such as dementia groups and support groups and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, disability groups, perhaps mm -hmm. the same because dis disabled uh, people have been particularly affected by COVID mm -hmm. in, in, over this last year, and they, there's been lots of reports where people have been quite quite badly affected. Bill, can I come to you, please? Yeah, um, I think the mental health thing is is the one that I would be most involved supporting mental health and, and vulnerable groups. If Leslie feels that she can manage it, uh, that she knows who the target is, um, I, I guess she will. She will be able to do that. Um, the, the other thing I would just make a point, and I have to declare an interest because I'm, I'm a trustee of the Over Day Centre, but the day centres and lunch clubs have been hit really badly in the last year. Um, you know, over day centre, and, and I'm sure that's typical of, all, of, of other day centres, it's been closed for a year, had no income whatsoever, mm. and they are struggling. Mm. And, um, uh, you know, I, do, I just wonder whether or not we might bear that in mind as well. But um, I, as I say, I declare an interest, I'm a trustee of over day centre. You know, but that's actually, that's actually a pretty good point actually. Now, uh, Chay, is this something that a conversation you might like to have officer, officer to officer, if you like, with regards to that? Because there's lots of businesses and things like that where I've had hardship grants. Well, they may not be entitled to a government grant per se, but we've got hardship grants for lots of different smaller businesses who didn't qualify. Now, whether these, that's a grey area as to a, a, a day centre would be considered to be a business, but actually it's going to be crucial in getting people back out and doing whatever they've got to do. So any, I wonder if there is any any leeway in that at all. Um, that might be something you might be able to, to inquire perhaps on our behalf with the that business group. 
um, just to just to clarify, Joe, so I, I do know that Over Day Centre has received some grant support. H exactly how much I, can't, I couldn't tell you, um, um, but um, but you know, still, uh, yeah, they, they, they're financially still being hit very badly. Still, still got bills to pay, and I think that's that's the yeah, thing. Exactly. I mean, these yeah. are these sort of places are critical to mm -hmm. us coming back to normal life. Okay, Claire. Um, yeah, this is a question for Leslie Jones. Um, so if we're looking on page 33, the options, I mean, obviously we want this money to be really well spent. And so um, if we go for A, do we already have an idea of who the organisations and community groups are that this money could be aimed at? So um, I had a conversation with Mark Freeman from CCVS. Yeah. Um, and I have a list of organisations here. Um, if I can find it, I had it here earlier. Um, so when we initially started to think about this, you know, we, we wanted to we wanted to kind of move away from just the age UKs and the care networks yeah. and really think about who were the organisations that were on the cold face that perhaps hadn't had the same opportunities for funding that some of the bigger charities have had. So I contacted Mark um, and he gave me a, a list of, of organisations. So they were they were organisations such as Cambridgeshire Hearing Health, um, At A Loss, which is a, a bereavement organisation, all of the day centres over Cotton and Burwell, um, some of the village halls, um, some of the like Grantchester Village Trust, uh, Papworth Community Trust, um, Histon and Impington Friends, a company called, or an organisation called Re-Engage, mm. Sourced and Sing for Pleasure, and COPE, who we already fund through our uh, service support grant, but they're doing some great work, um, contact or keeping the elderly who don't leave, you know, who haven't left home, keeping them in contact via telephone, via mutual interest conversation. So it could be around poetry or it could be around the Six William Museum um, just to, you know, get people talking over a, a mutual subject. And that apparently that that's been really, really popular. And but I think those were the kinds of things that we were thinking about. OK, um, so can I just follow that up, Joe, please? Yeah, so please do. Uh, if we if we choose option A, then um, we would be the idea would be that we would receive grant applications for up to thirty thousand pounds from a range of those organisations. How would we how would we organise the spending of this thirty thousand pounds? There is um, Claire. There is a I don't know whether it's attached. Did you there, there is an appendix which follows on, which has the, dra um, the draft criteria. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, it's, yes, I, I, it's, I see that I was reading that before. So oh, okay. we would take up, we would actually take applications from them in the same way as we would take applications for the unity chess farms. The thing is that where we've got the five thousand pounds, that doesn't give many options for helping people no. out, does it? So no, I'm just wondering whether or not. Mm. I, I yeah, suppose what I'm really getting lower. at is that um, it, it's great to have this pot of money, but actually for all the organisations that you've read out, it's not a huge sum of money. No. Cheers. So how do yeah. we make the, I mean, it's a great idea. It's a really important thing to do, but how do we make the best use of it? Probably lower the grant in a little bit so we can spread it wider. It may not be, it may not be much, but it's something. That's the choice. Either that will do bigger grants to very few. Yeah. Remember that we have the, um, we've got the post COVID, you know, the community grant that we're doing. Um, so the community yeah. work that we're doing, that will also come with grant funding. So Bill, when you mentioned about mental health, because I'm concerned that we might spread the net too far um, and that perhaps we could use some of the grant money uh, that will come with the community uh, engagement work that we're doing. So we could, we could look at how we allocate funding from that. 
Yeah. Is, is, is there any, Leslie, is there, through you, Chair, sorry. Um, is there any reason why those two pots of money couldn't be run together to get to get broader a, a broader effect? Uh, no, I mean, I guess at the moment we've got this this pot of money specifically comes from the older people's budget. And I think, uh, again, it would have to be run past John, wouldn't it, as to whether we can yeah. merge that budget mm. with um, Jay. Can you remember, I don't know where the money is coming from for the community. Is that leftover community chest money? Is it depends. The yeah. Are you speaking about the community chest COVID grants of up to £2,000 or are you talking about some other future grant monies that may come with the recovery projects we're just embarking? Yeah, I, I'm talking about, so uh, Catherine, myself and Vicky are running a project where we are going to be looking at the um, enthusiasm and energy for uh, volunteers um, within the mutual aid groups, community groups to continue working. Um, mm. On the kind of health and well-being of, uh, of their communities and that will come with a pot of money my understanding was that money was coming from unspent community chest money no i think there's two different things there. I think <laughs> we've got a launch scheme that's already in place that we're accepting applications for to be reviewed next month for the community chest sort of around about thirty thousand pounds um give or take was allocated to that scheme um, with the future recovery work, I'm not yet aware that any amount or any money has yet been been pledged for that. But it, I'd assume there is is some money to go with that. But I've not heard any intricacies of that. Yeah, the, I think there's money coming from the county, but that um, that's that's in the future. Mm. So, yeah, so okay. in terms of merging, I don't think that that at the moment is possible. Yeah, I'd need to make inquiries, Joe. OK, so really then Perhaps we're looking at that 5,000 then, Leslie, being somewhat lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you did it at two and a half, it's only 12, isn't it? 12 groups, and you, you read out as many as, as 12, to my knowledge, when you were going through them. Um, so you're next. Bill, you've still um, got your hand. My, my comment Sorry. was roughly what you've just said, Joe. I would go down to 2,000 uh, as a stimulus just to stimulate people and I was a bit concerned that it said that they need to be able to provide up-to-date copies of their accounts. My thinking is that we're, start, we're potentially starting something new uh, and one of that they may not be not, not have been in existence as a committee uh, or an organisation prior to wanting to start something, this new support um, uh, and use it and applying for this grant. So I was just a bit worried about that. Thank you. Jay? Thanks, Joyce. Uh, yeah, it was just a point to say that I think that any of these groups mentioned here could also apply for the COVID related community chest grants to add like another sort of £2,000. Put it out there. You could also apply for a community grant at chest as well, because they're not they're not stopped there either. So they could have three bites at a cherry at this rate. Okay. Oh, sorry, um, so Joe, if that's the case, oh, sorry. sorry, if that was the case, how do we make that simple for the applicants? Because that would be no quite way. a um I think we need to have a think about that, don't we? We yeah. won't want them applying three times. That's a, a lot of time spent on their part, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. And and officers. So That's, that was a reason for my question, my original earlier question, really. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. We need to get that. If we, if, yeah, if we just deal with this for a moment. I mean, Sue, I think, and and as Claire and Sue have both suggested that the the five thousand should be a bit lower. I think. And so, I mean, are we looking to try and spread this a little bit more to do some good with with more than a lot of good with very few? Um, can so I, if so, can we come down to a prior? I mean, Sue's, Sue suggested 2,000. Um, Go on, Claire. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just wondering, it, has this already been run by John, by John, the idea of setting up this separate grant for other people? 
I think we had to get his agreement. So um, he's, he's happy that we set up a, a yes. separate fund. Yeah. Okay. Because, yes, yeah. because yeah. there's that issue about rolling funds over and we can't yeah. automatically do it. Yeah. OK, so I'm, I'm happy that he's in agreement with it. I think, like Sue, I think we should go for smaller sums of money and reach more people. So what the, the, the COVID grant is 2000 maximum, isn't it? Yeah. So I think it, I, we should make this 2000 maximum. Yeah, I but think actually, both. both. Also, Joe, just to say what we found, and uh, this goes back to something that um, Leslie was mentioning earlier, what the work that Catherine and, is, and she are doing. Um, it, it, in my experience in this ward, it's not necessarily money that's making a difference. It's actually finding how to reach people and a small sums of money will help. Um, but it's more sort of galvan first of all, finding how to reach people and then bringing the volunteers together with the people. And and actually, you don't need large sums of money for that. Okay, point taken. So is that okay then, um, Leslie, if we drop yeah. that five to two? Okay, um, carry on, Leslie. If there's anything else to say? No, there isn't. I mean, so... Um, what we were talking about who we're going to target. My, yeah, my, you'd like to widen it to vulnerable. Um, I, I kind of did mention it, but I didn't put it in part five, I think, or I didn't write it in part four, who must the, uh, what must the project deliver? So if that can be changed, all projects must target the over 65s, um, their carers um, and, and vulnerable, uh, I'll, I'll word that to include the vulnerable, um, that we're reducing it to £2,000. I think that if we spread it to mental health, we're spreading it too wide. Yeah. Um, personally. And yeah. I think, sorry, mm -hmm. I, I think also, much as I like the idea of it, I think actually going for vulnerable people of any age is going to spread it too thinly too, if, if I'm honest. I mean, you may lose the effect of it, but Maybe I'm wrong. Well, well, it's a bit like when it's gone, it's gone, isn't it? Really, I suppose it's. Yeah, but you might you might be talking two and sixpence a person. You know, it's it, that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, you know that that would be my my concern. It it actually has no real impact. But, but can I just interject there that when you say healthy, promote healthy and active communities, um, that could could in effect also mean promote mentally healthy. Active communities. Yes. Mm. But you I mean you could even put in brackets promote healthy, broadly understood, close brackets and active communities, because you know, uh, uh, for the aged, healthy has it can be a broad range. You know, you yeah. can be very healthy of mind, but not so healthy of body. That's true. Jay? Thanks, Joyce. Um, yeah, the only other idea that just came to me was that um, a bit like the COVID grants, we're doing them all in one hit. So I suppose another way of doing it, it's all about how you communicate the message when you're when you're putting the comms out. But you could say that we've got £30,000 here to distribute. Please tell us about your projects and how much they cost, and we will have a committee meeting and decide at the meeting how much is funded for each project. It's just another way of doing it, I suppose, without having a kind of cap. That's a good. That's that's actually a. a that's actually a very good idea as it goes. I know it makes it's a bit of work for officers and obviously the committee and what have you, but do you know that actually. Melbourne and Paris Council do this with their solar farm money. If they're over subscribed, it's a requirement to turn up at a meeting, whether it be virtual or otherwise, and present your case, answer questions and what have you. And then they they decide whether or not you're going to get funding. Uh, and then they go then to how much they've got and then they divide it up by percentage based yeah. on the project. Is there not a risk of there's an expectation then, isn't there, if someone's project is quite costly, 
they they apply to us thinking that they might get the full cost or you know full funding for it and then find that they only get a thousand pounds I suppose that caveat has to be made, doesn't it? I mean, at the moment we can only give two thousand pounds. So if their project was going to cost three, they're still third short. I mean, like you know, it's not. This is a. This is perhaps almost seed funding, some to a degree. You know, get get going and then find money from somewhere else. Jay, yeah, you want to? Sorry. Yeah, I think the only other thing I wanted to say was that we just haven't had the take up on the COVID side as yet. We've had five applications for the COVID side, so it would be a shame to get to that meeting and then only two people having applied for £2,000 each kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the appetite is. I don't know if you've approached the organisations. I guess probably not uh, because, you know, we haven't yet agreed it. So, yeah, that's the only thing I would be wary of um, making this brilliant fund a brand new uh, grants process and then ending up with just a couple of people and being left with 26 grand what to do with. I know and I, I personally absolutely don't want to do this because this is mm. money was do you remember this is the mobile warden scheme left money over. that went out to procurement then we had some left over which we put into the existing mm. grant scheme and now we've still got some left over so I, I don't want to mm. be in that situation again. Okay. Mark, yeah. Let's come back to my earlier point and that's what I was trying to say earlier on that a lot of the help that's needed out there doesn't need money or doesn't need very much money and and therefore you know the other option of putting the 30,000 into the organizations that we already support you know sh should we it would that be a better option and and actually the fact that what Jay's just said makes me think that that's even more true that there is a need for work to be done out there but it it, it doesn't necessarily need financial support. I mean, you don't need money to go and pick up an elderly person and take them to have a cup of tea or take them to meet other people. And I know here that that's what's so lacking. You know, they used to have a social club every Thursday and boy, have they missed it. Um, and that doesn't need money. They pay us, you know, that's kept going by the village here. But they can't do that now, or not at the moment anyway. And even if they could, but they'd be too scared to go out and to mix. And, and that's the kind of work that needs to be done on the ground. Johnny. Thanks. Just lastly, I guess the only other option is just saying a, a range. So the, the scheme offers grants between one and five thousand pounds. Just the other option, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. What do we think? Do you think we need to come Jay's. to this? Say again. Claire, what did you say? Sorry. I, I'm just wondering, I mean, it's really important that we do the best thing with this pot of money. I'm just wondering whether we need to come back to this. I'm, I'm sort of looking at Leslie, whether you feel that if we don't make a decision today, that would be not a good way to go. Well, I think, well, I was, oh, sorry, let's go on. Well, my response, if, if, if it doesn't go today, then going back to Sue's point, it just lingers on. Um, so I think you either have to make the decision that either we we agree today that we're going to use this money to support older, vulnerable people, or we, it gets subsumed into the service support grants, which is the existing mm our existing customers if you like and then we decide when we get when we get together in July at our workshop how we will fund those service support grants going forwards and whether we well, widen I'm, the net you know to who we who we invite okay I'm going to do I'm going to go slightly off piece here I think and then this is probably not the right way to do it but when uh, we, we've done a lot today and and we can sometimes trip ourselves up by trying to do the right thing. So my my question is going to be first at Leslie. It's going to be aimed at both at Leslie and Jay, but it comes to Leslie first. What would be your preferred route? Um, well, you know, have a listen to everybody's arguments this afternoon. 
Mm -hmm. Part of me actually thinks maybe we just put it into the service support grant. If the evidence is, as Jay says, that there's only been a few applicants for the post-COVID money, there is lots of post-COVID money around at the moment for organisations to apply to. Um, that maybe this ends up just being one of those funds which is undersubscribed and then we end up with leftover money again. So based on those conversations, I think I would go with the service support grant route. Jay? Yeah, and I would support Leslie on that and also add the caveat that we approach each of the groups that Leslie's mentioned and ask them to directly apply to the COVID pot, which serves to increase the numbers on the COVID pot and gets them some extra money so everybody wins. Excellent idea. Brilliant. OK. Bill, you had your hand up. It's now gone down. Was that the, the, uh, these, these guys think, answering that question? I, I think Leslie and, and Jay have, uh, have, have pretty much summed it up. I mean, I, I was going to say that I think that we should be targeting the elderly in particular because they are the the members of the society have been so badly, uh, mostly affected by COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know vulnerable people who are younger are also affected, but by, you know, the fatalities were almost, all, you know, most were 60 plus. So yep. that was what I was going to say. But having listened to, to Leslie and Jane, and, and after all that, you know, they're, they, they're working with this day in, day, day in and day out. And if that's what they think is the best use for it, I'm willing to go with that. OK. Aaron, Given the well, service up. support grants haven't received additional funding for some time. So again, that would be something that would come back to the Grants Advisory Committee. Yeah following our workshop would be seeking to increase funding. Um, if this money can be, again, you know, we need to run it past John, um, but ring fence for the service support grant. I mean, we, okay. we might need to be reminded what all the service support grants do actually, um, <laughs> actually do support. Um, yeah. Because we don't, none of us, I, I can't remember what they all do. And again, well, we can go through that at the workshop or I can send you yeah. uh, that information prior to the workshop. So you've got that mm. and then we can take it from there. Yeah, yeah. that's, a good, right, that's the good. idea, I think. Right. So we're running with we're running with Leslie and Jay's. Preference for the moment with the view for the, the workshop as well. Aaron, you got your hand up, mate. You're on mute, British. No, you're not, mute, not mute, mute and hand up. I mean, my oh, word. sorry, this is I'm not used to these new headphones. That's why my apologies. Um, <laughs> I, uh, buttons on your ear. <laughs> no, it's it's one of these uh, new ones with the arm. Anyway, sorry. Um, I, I didn't catch what Jay said. Um, when then everybody said, oh, yes, Jay, I agree with that. It, um, it would basically be the uh, rollover option on the report. Aaron, and a bit of work behind the scenes to make use of the COVID grant, if that's all. Um, okay. So. Right then. Yeah, I'll support that. Well, I think. Be yeah. creative, all right, Aaron? <laughs> Actual fact, Aaron, on that last piece with regards to the, uh, the support grants and what have you, Leslie and Jay were quite clear about what their preferences were. Right, and I think we've all heard that. That's fine. So the minutes will probably be a discussion with Jay and Leslie just to confirm the wording. But I think we know where we're going with that one. OK. Thank you, everybody. Absolutely stonker. I don't know how many we did there. 19, wasn't it? I think. That was great. And um, thank you very much, Leslie, for this piece of work. Um, sorry we went around the houses and came back to where you actually wanted to be in the first place, which is brilliant. But anyway, <laughs> hey, what the heck? We've done it right. We've done it justice. Yeah. Um, now, there is a possibility or no possibility that the 28th of May may or may not be in person or sitting in the car park 25 feet apart because people haven't made the right decision further up near the River Thames. Um, however, we are where we are. So that's that's the next date is the 10 o'clock on the 28th of May, which is a Friday again. We're next meeting at the moment. So at the moment it, it will be potentially advisory, 
where more advisory than advisory was before. And then I think the chief executive makes the advisory to the advisory to the lead member. Anyway, you get you get where we're going. But either way, lovely to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Has anyone got anything else they want to add, yeah. say or whatever before we go? Enjoy yep. your bank holiday weekend. Yes, enjoy. Oh, yes. Yeah, indeed. indeed. Yeah. In that just, case, uh, yeah, I'll well, call just, the meeting just one thing. close. Oh, hang on a minute. So go on, carry on, Jay. Just one thing, Jay. Yeah, just to remind everybody that there is going to be around about twenty-five thousand pounds left for this COVID community part, which we will be discussing next month. So please do uh, ask groups that that you know that you know to apply for the scheme, and we'll do some more comms on that. Um, this this week and or, or next week, um, just to try and uh, get the word out there. But yeah, do please have those conversations with any groups that are doing anything remotely related to getting back together after COVID. There's hardly any rules around whether they can or can't apply. It's just all about getting people back out there. Okay. So, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Right, Liam, could you end the feed for us before we all go?